Good evening, everybody. My name is Chuck Miller. I am the managing principal and co-founder of the Market Elements. I am based in Boulder, and my colleague here, Oliver, he is based in Houston, Texas. And first of all, I'd just like to thank everybody for coming here this, this evening. I know we're competing against the NFL draft. It's tough competition, <laughs> but uh, I know that you're checking to see how the Broncos are doing and keeping my fingers crossed that they get defense this year. We really need that. Um, so tonight is very exciting for me on many different levels. Um, a little bit, I, have a, I kind of feel like Oprah tonight, to be honest with you. And what I mean by that is uh, Oprah has this TV segment, Her Favorite Things. I don't know if you've seen it. It's a great show. Anyways, um, so tonight's kind of representation of some of Chuck's favorite things. And um, don't get too excited. I'm not giving any cars away or free websites or anything like that. Um, but everyone speaking tonight, I know personally. Um, I've done business with them. Uh, they're fantastic companies, great products, very innovative people, great track record of success. Um, but I want to let you know you're in good hands tonight um, because the topic I'm going to speak about tonight is something I'm an expert on. I feel very good about it. Um, that topic is failure. So, so as an entrepreneur, I've had the experience, both success and failure. And uh, as you know, failure can be some of your best teaching tools, right? You learn a lot from failure, more than your successes. And when I try to think about those failures, I really can't point to a single thing and say that's what caused that failure. No, it was really the cumulative effect of many small decisions over time that added up and I, those businesses failed. So, you know, as a result of that, I was thinking, wow, if I had better data at that time, at those decision points, would I have changed those decisions? And there's no question about it. I would have made better decisions and maybe those businesses would not have failed. But they did, and that I learned a lot from that. And I changed my philosophy on how to manage business. I became much more data-driven. And so after those failures, I really spent a lot of time looking at tools and frameworks and platforms to help me make better decisions as a manager. Now, luckily, I had the opportunity to be a part of a startup in 2009, 2010. That company was called PicoSpin. Now, PicoSpin was the uh, manufacturer of the world's first miniature NMR spectrometer. So I know it's, it's, it's for chemists, it's a really fantastic tool for chemists, and it really revolutionized chemistry education. So I was asked to be the director of business operations as well as the director of marketing, and I knew that I had a bootstrap budget. So I had to find tools to give me good data that I can act on um, that would increase my chances of success and help me minimize my failures and be able to measure my ROI. That's what I was looking for. So, Luckily, I settled in on inbound marketing. That's what I decided on doing. I customized it. Uh, we took this product to market. It was a huge success. <laughs> About a year and a half ago, we sold the business. And to be honest with you, this, I mean, it's a marketer's dream, right? It was an innovative product, and it was just fantastic to market. And I got the help of Carbonate to do the website. They did a wonderful job. But uh, after that sale of the company, I decided to productize this digital formula. So I worked with Oliver, and we designed the market element. And we are an inbound marketing consulting agency that helps small, medium-sized businesses with inbound marketing. Because I know how much it's helped me. I know how much it helps small businesses and medium-sized businesses because it's cost-effective, allows you to measure um, you know, your ROI, and increases your chances of success and minimizes your failure. So it's a fantastic framework to work with. So tonight, most of the presentation is going to be about inbound marketing. Just take a quick sip here. So um, again, I'm going to talk about what it is, why it's so powerful, talk a little bit about the, uh, the methodology that goes into inbound marketing, what are the foundational components, and then kind of bring it together from a strategic perspective. How do these pieces fit together? And then talk about how it improves your ROI and puts you in a position so you can manage against failure. So those are pretty powerful value proposition for inbound marketing. All right, so what is it? So inbound marketing uh, leverages uh, rich, compelling, and contextual content. You take that content and you go online and you try to be strategically found by your target market. You do that through creative CTAs, call to actions, and you hope that that target market sees that and they click on it. They're opting into that call to action, which then takes them right to your website. And at that point, you want to convert that individual into a lead. Again, they're opting in to become a lead. And then you nurture that lead until they become an opportunity, and you nurture them again until they become a customer. That whole process is 
inbound marketing, all the ways known as pull marketing. Now, to contrast that, there's push marketing, right? In these type of cases, they haven't opted in at all. This is direct marketing, telemarketing, print advertising, television. That is the old traditional way of marketing, a lot less effective than inbound marketing. So studies have shown that inbound marketing will increase leads, improve your conversion rates, uh, increase revenue, and of course your ROI. So there's definitely some uh, powerful uh, value props there for inbound marketing. So I just have a few statistics to share with you tonight, just to kind of support how powerful inbound marketing is. Um, this study by HubSpot has shown that uh, inbound marketing delivers 54% more leads uh, to your funnel than traditional outbound marketing. So very powerful. And I don't have the statistic in front of me, but also increases your quality of leads as well. Uh, this next uh, statistic was provided by Search Engine Journal that says inbound leads are 61% less than outbound leads. So here's a financial justification for inbound marketing. And this one is of particular interest of me too, because they, HubSpot did this survey, okay, and they surveyed 3,400 senior level uh, marketing executives and asked them, what is your biggest challenge? And that challenge is measuring or proving ROI on their marketing activities. Um, even for this group here, I sent out a survey and I asked uh, all of you, you know, can you measure your ROI? And 70% of the people that responded said no. So clearly this is a problem for a lot of businesses. And inbound marketing, the way it's constructed because it's a digital platform, will allow you the capabilities to measure your ROI. So I particularly like this graphic. This is actually uh, provided by HubSpot. Now HubSpot is an inbound marketing software platform. And, but they, they uh, from a pictorial standpoint, I really like it and I use this all the time. But, Inbound marketing is broken down into four distinct phases. There's the attract phase, convert, close, and delight. And the objective of these four phases is to use specific timely tactics to help move that individual through the customer life cycle until they become customers. So that is basically, in a nutshell, the inbound marketing methodology. So in order to have a, a solid inbound marketing platform, you need five foundational components, in my opinion. And those are the website, your SEO, SEM, social media, email marketing, and measurement. Now, I wish I could spend a lot of time on each one of these components, just don't have the time, but I'm gonna highlight a particular characteristic that you'll see very, in a, like a common thread through all of inbound marketing, and that is persona focus. Um, it is, whether you're a small business, a startup, or a multinational, it's really important to know who your customers are. So spending time and creating these personas. Now personas are in essence fictional characters that represent a target group. And those target groups have characteristics and behaviors that you want to acquire. Those are your target markets. So you develop your personas and then you develop your content off of those personas. You also develop your keywords off of those personas. What's gonna resonate with those personas? And another comment on keywords, try not to think of generic single word keywords. You just won't be found effectively. Think of the long tail keyword, and those are two to three words put together. Now, social media. Um, someone told me this one time, I just, it resonated, but it's, you're at a cocktail party. You don't want to be the me monster, right? You don't want to talk about yourself. Me, 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 it's all about me. You're going to be tuned out at that party, right? You want to, if you're going to uh, talk about yourself, maybe 50% of the time. The other 50%, you want to be engaging, interacting with the community. So again, your messaging needs to be geared toward your personas on social media. The most important thing you can do for your email marketing is have highly segmented lists. And you do that by focusing on uh, your personas, making sure that content is married with those personas, and segment your list. That will increase your open rates and your conversion rates dramatically. And pulling this all together, in my opinion, is a, a marketing automation platform. Now, there's so many platforms out there. There's HubSpot, of course. There's Marketo. Salesforce has one. Um, Silverpop. There's just a lot of platforms. And luckily, there's been a democratization of this technology, which is, makes it very affordable for small business and startups to afford these platforms now. So one, a lot, I've had several different meetings about this, and they always ask, do I have to invest in marketing automation tool in order to do inbound marketing? The answer is no. You really don't. However, 
you're, you won't be able to measure your successes. You open yourself up to more risk. And it just, because they're so affordable these days, it just doesn't make sense why not to look at it and consider it. So this is a blank strategy map. So along the x-axis there at the very top are the four distinct phases I talked about in the methodology. And along the y-axis there are the five foundational components. Now I just wanted to share this with you at a 40,000 foot view to give you an, an understanding of how a strategy map would look like from a tactical standpoint. The most important tactic that you're gonna employ for inbound marketing is your content. But everyone says content is king, it's absolutely true, but even more important, it's contextual content that's key. So your content needs to address your personas, but it also needs to address the phase appropriate time in which those individuals are in the sale in the customer life cycle. So it needs to be contextual and address your content. So this also applies to your call to actions, your campaigns, blogging, keywords, workflows, and of course segmentation, and then also your KPIs and reporting. So along the way, as you roll out these different tactics, just remember personas and context within the phases. And if you start with this, then you can build out a plan from that. So I just want to share with you what a strategy map would look like. Now, I love this particular graph. Um, this was provided by HubSpot. And what they did is they surveyed their customers one year after they purchased their software. And they asked them, how have your visitors improved? How have your leads improved? And are you getting more business? And according to the survey, they have uh, their customers after a year have three and a half times more visitors, six times more leads, and 69% more revenue. So that is a just a huge benefit uh, and testimony to inbound marketing. But of course, the other side of the coin, coin is there are opportunities to fail at each part of that sales funnel. It's just reality. But the great thing about inbound marketing and investing in the platform is that you know if you're failing in real time. You can pivot off of those decisions, change your strategy, and that to me is one of the biggest selling points for inbound marketing. It's data driven. You'll know if you're succeeding, you'll know if you're failing but you can change your path. And so what I recommend is obviously uh, to change your culture of marketing, make it so it's much more data driven. And if you invest in these, these platforms, you'll have real time feedback. And then you put in the right processes and reporting, you can do some dynamic things, especially with campaigns and promotions. You can get a little bit more creative and be able to do incredible different types of segmentation, progressive profiling, lead scoring, all these are benefits of of doing an inbound marketing type of an approach. When you do fail, I recommend stepping back, meeting with your stakeholders, and doing a post-mortem. And that post-mortem will give you great information. You'll understand causation, effect, and learnings from that. And when you've done this for a while, you're gonna find that, wow, I have control over my marketing. I'm willing to take more calculated risks. And that can be just so powerful uh, because that allows you to be creative. And that's really what I'm trying to, to sell here is like you invest in the platform, you increase your chances of success, minimize your risk, be able to measure your ROI, and you, you have a culture now that you can be a risk taker. And that's so key in marketing. So I leave you with this quote, uh, don't be afraid to fail, be afraid not to try. So uh, thank you everybody, um, really appreciate talking to you. And if you have questions about inbound, please come see me.